part two lecture is in continuation with the part one of design of frequency synthesizer using ICLM 565. Learning outcome, at the end of this session, students will be able to design a complete frequency synthesizer using PLLIC LM565. Contents, here we are going to uh, design a frequency divider network which is in a feedback path of a PLL. In part one, we discussed the frequency divider network uh, to get 1 kilohertz from 1 megahertz but that was fixed one. So here in this uh, feedback path the frequency divider network is variable so that we can get the range of output frequency at the output of PLL and the range of frequency required in earlier example uh, was 1 kilohertz to 999 kilohertz. So to get this range of uh, frequencies at the output of PLL, we need to have variable frequency divider network and that we are uh, using it or uh, that we are implementing using the thumb wheel switches. And in the next part we will see the design, complete design using LM565 which is called PLLIC. Here we will look at the value of n, what will be the value of n in divide by network in PLL feedback loop. So here uh, this is what the VCO output, pin number 4 we get VCO output that output is given to the divide by n network here this this three decade dividers constitutes of divide by n network and the output of this divide by n network is given to the another input of the phase detector one of the input in the last lecture we connected with uh, uh, one of the input of phase detector and this feedback uh, goes to the another input of the phase detector. Okay. So what will be the value of n in divided by uh, network in PLL feedback? So to understand this value of n, what should be the value of n, we need to know uh, what is the range of frequencies we needed. Actually we needed a range of frequencies from 1 kilohertz to 999 kilohertz. So what we need is three decade dividers we need because uh, maximum value is what 999 so to divide by this value we require three decade dividers okay this is maximum value we look at output from vco this is the output of a vco pin number 4 is given to three cascaded divided by 10 divider uh, dividers whose preset value can be set from 0 to 999 using thumb wheel switches. So that actually is not shown here, but here this uh, counters are attached with the preset uh, value and that preset value can be set by using this uh, electromechanical device called thumb wheel switches. And then here output from frequency divided by network is given to the another input of a phase comparator called pin number 5. Okay. So this is what the PLL feedback path and we uh, use uh, divide by n network and this n can be varied from value 0 to 999 using thumb wheel switches. So let us see how we can uh, do it. So here how our complete circuit works that is given here. So initially at start power on reset circuit here if I show you the circuit here just I will show you see this this is what the power on reset circuitry here and that power on reset circuitry is 
uh, output of this power on research circuitry is given to one of the input of the AND gate. And see, this, this is a complete, uh, we can say, design of a PLL for getting output of 1 kilohertz to 999 kilohertz using IC565. So this is IC565. So uh, in earlier video, we saw uh, this pin number 2 is FIN, which is one of the input to the phase detector, which is coming from output of the decade dividers here. Look at this is 1 kilohertz. And we last time discussed 374192s are used to divide this uh, 1 megahertz frequency by the crystal oscillator. This, this, this section is a crystal oscillator and the frequency of this crystal oscillator is 1 megahertz that is given to the 3 decade dividers. Okay, so in cascade actually and then the output of this uh, uh, decade divider that means th cascaded 3 decade dividers is 1 kilohertz and that is given as a one of the input to the phase detector pin number 2. Now, pin number 4 is a VCO output and that we are again give, giving to the uh, another divide by N network. Again, we discussed uh, just now there are 3 decade dividers here. Actually, ICs are same 74192 here, also 74192 here. Only thing is that the preset inputs are used here. Here preset inputs are not used, they are grounded. But here preset inputs are used uh, and it, it is attached with this electromechanical device called thumb wheel switches. So we can set this value by just uh, moving the wheel to any value from uh, 0 to 9. Okay, So that will be the preset value to the counter. So look at here for every decade uh, counter we have a preset input connected with uh, thumb wheel switches okay and the output of this decade divider uh, where it goes pin number 5 of uh, our 565 that is another input of the uh, phase detector just look at here just trace this one see this output is going here and then uh, to the pin number 5 pin number 5 is a uh, another input of a phase detector pin number 3 is uh, input uh, which is grounded because here f in uh, we have given already given to the pin number 2 okay and the output we are getting variable frequency here only that is vc output here we, here only we are getting the output frequency which is desired one which is ranging from 1 kilohertz to 999 kilohertz. So we have seen already the design of this uh, C1.1 nanofarad and R1 is uh, 6 kilo ohm. This we have already designed okay, in the uh, uh, first uh, part of the video. Then uh, we have discussed this part in the uh, first video how to get 1 kilohertz from 1 megahertz. Only thing remaining is how to design this uh, crystal oscillator that we will discuss uh, just after uh, this slide. Okay, So let us go to and see how we can uh, see it. So initially at start power on research circuit generates a low output and uh, divided by 999 network is activated. That means divided by n network is activated if power on reset is uh, generated. Divider network loads 999 count and starts counting down. Okay. So what happens is whenever you switch on the power supply to the uh, PLL synthesizer, uh, 999 value is loaded into the uh, divide by n network and it starts down counting. Then what happens? Whenever count reaches 0, 0, because it is down counting, initially it was loaded with 999. Okay. So at some point in time, it will come to 0, 0, 0. Then what is generated is terminal count value is generated, down counting. T series stands for terminal count in down counting mode. Okay. So then T series of MSD, most significant digit here, I, I will show you here. Here, if you look at 
then this uh, TCD, this is most significant digit, this is the least significant digit, and this is a TCD, this goes to actually the one of the input of the AND gate. Okay, so let us see what happens next. So when this count reaches 0, 0, 0, then TCD of most significant digit goes low and again 999 is loaded in divided by n network and this cycle repeats to get continuously 999 kilohertz from VCU output. Okay. So this is what the operation of the whole circuit is explained in this uh, paragraph. Hence, the complete design can be drawn in shown in the next slide. Okay. So, let us see. But before going to the next slide, we will have one question. What are design considerations of crystal oscillator? Pause the video and answer the question. Now, to answer the question, here we have drawn a, a crystal oscillator circuitry which consists of this main crystal of 1 megahertz and uh, two uh, NOT gate uh, with uh, input is biased using this biasing resistance R1 and R2. So what are the design considerations here? The design consideration here is we should set select the value of R1 and R2 such that this NOT gate acts as an uh, amplifier. So, when it acts as an amplifier, when the input voltage is 1.35, just look at here, next slide. So, when input voltage is 1.35 at the input of the NOT gate, from where we are getting? From 5 volts, just look at back here, 5 volt is connected, here I want 1.35. So, what should be the value of R1 and R2, we are going to find out. So, 5 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by R2 that is what the equation. So, 5 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2, this is what the equation we get and what, how much voltage we require? 1.35. So, where 1.35 volt is the input voltage of the inverter. Okay. So, if I solve this, I get this relationship between R1 and R2. What is this relationship? Uh, just uh, uh, rearrange these values and you find out the relation R1 equal to 73 divided by 27 multiplied by R2. So from this, let us assume R2 of 480 ohm and put this value into this equation R2 is equal to 480 ohm and find out R1. So we get R1 equal to 1.3 kilo ohm and so we can uh, see here, this is R1 is equal to 1.3 kilo ohm and R2 is equal to 480 ohm. So, this way, now let us see the complete design once again, because here we saw uh, this is what the crystal oscillator, we start from here, this is a 1 megahertz crystal oscillator, same thing, this is R1, R2, uh, as we found the values, these are the inverters, then output of this 1 megahertz signal is given to the frequency dividers, 3 decade dividers and we get 1 kilohertz at the output, that 1 kilohertz output is given to one of the input of the phase detector that is pin number 2, then, then uh, uh, output of this VCO is given to input of the uh, divided by N network which is variable 1 from 1 to 999, so that can be set by the thumb wheel switches. So, for that we need 3 decade dividers because the maximum value to be divided is 999. So, to divide by 999 we require 3 decade dividers and uh, each, each decade divider is associated uh, with this uh, thumb wheel switches to uh, uh, change the value of a thumb wheel switch and if you change the value of thumb wheel switch we get uh, the uh, changed value at the output of the VCO. So, this uh, output of the uh, most significant digit of a divided by n network is given to the another input of the phase detector that is pin number 5 and this is what the feedback path of a PLL, this one, whatever I am tracing 
is a feedback path of a PLL. And this is whatever I am tracing from this point is a, a input uh, network of a PLL. And this is just a, a restart circuit that means power on reset circuit. Okay, so uh, just look at here. <coughs> Whenever this switch is closed, this capacitor gets discharged completely and this uh, logic level here will be zero and that zero will be sent to the uh, this uh, PL that is uh, preset load and uh, this value associated with this uh, preset inputs will be loaded into the counter. So whenever I uh, press this, okay. And this is a push button. When you remove this, again, this capacitor uh, gets charged through this uh, five volts and this again will be logic one and uh, this will be uh, actually depends upon uh, whether this most significant uh, counter is uh, uh, generated carry out or not. So initially the carry, to, carry out is not generated that's why it is logic one because it is active low input that might, that's why this is also one. So both are one so PL is inactive at that time. Okay. So this is what the complete design of a frequency synthesizer. And where we get the output that is uh, uh, 1 kilohertz to 999 kilohertz that we get at VCO output. And uh, how do I change the value of this output? Just by changing uh, these thumb wheel switches positions. For example, if I set this value to be 125, 1, to 5 then what I get is uh, because input is fixed one that is 1 kilohertz so output of the VCO is uh, n times f in here n is 1 to 5 125 so what I get at the output of the VCO is 125 kilohertz 125 kilohertz so whatever we are getting output here depends now upon these preset values which are set by using thumb wheel switches. References Electronic System Design by Vaibhav T. Tarate, Electrotech Publication Satara. I use this book for preparing these slides. Thank you. Thank you.